A few years ago I created this zombie clown uh, by the name of Quincy and one of his uh, design features is he's got this giant dagger in his back. Let's just go to layer two and take a look at that dagger. Uh, one thing that uh, I wanted to do was have something fun so I put this thread that's actually modeled into, if we go to texture wire we can see it's modeled into the hilt and it's all four point polys which is the way I like to work with uh, subdivisional surfaces or sub patches. So I thought we could take a look at creating uh, a sub patch thread set up like this. Uh, so why don't we go ahead and just dive right in. I'm going to go over and go file new object just so we can kind of start from from scratch. And I'm going to start just in one window. We're going to go about building this uh, a little little different than uh, than you might think. I'm going to start with a box and let's just make a flat plane and I'm gonna give it some segments so using the up arrow key I'm just gonna give it some segments and then uh, running across I'm gonna give it some segments as well so we could hit the arrow key I'm just gonna hit in for numeric so you can see that we don't always have to use the arrow key we can come over here and I can say that in the X I want eight segments Okay, so I can have eight segments running through here, and if uh, if I want here, I can go you know 18, 24, whatever. We'll just go ahead and leave it like this. Okay, so I've got this um, flat plane that has multiple segments. Let's go ahead and go to texture wire here so we can see. And uh, somehow I'm going to make this a disc. Well, I can I can bend it around, but before I do that, in order to get that spiral shape that you saw in the the threading, I'm going to offset this pattern. Okay, so one way that I can go about doing that is to hop over to the Modify tab and choose Shear. Okay, and if I right click and drag, I can get the fall off settings for this. The, the small little tip here, that's zero, and the big end right here of this uh, little triangle, uh, that would be 100%. So when I go to Move, it's going to move this end 100%, this end zero, and it's going to do a smooth fall off, a smooth gradient between those two points. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to offset by two rows. So I'm just going to hold down control, left click and left click and drag up and I'm going to drag up two two rows so it's offset by that. I'll commit to that. Let's go to our window. So we've got now we've got this skewed, this sheared flat plane. Um, while in modify I'm going to go ahead and choose bend and I'm going to I'm going to hold down control and I'm going to left click and drag but one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to watch over in this window okay and I can see exactly how uh, how far around I've gone and I'm going to go all the way until it says 360 okay and then I can let go I'm going to hit F2 to center the object it's inside out but that's okay F for flip now these points aren't merged so I'm going to merge them hit that's M for merge I'm going to hit tab and we can see that it's now one solid object. But the benefit of doing it this way is that I've got my spirals going all the way around. Okay, But that doesn't give me threads. That's just the base to give me threads. So I'm going to go ahead and, and um, start working on the threads. Let's go to full screen. Now I also like to save copies of my objects as I go so I can always go back. So I'm going to hit control C for copy. Go to layer 2 paste. That way I can always go back here if I'd like. I'm going to go to edge mode and select this one edge move over to select, select loop, and it selects, remember we offset it so it spirals all the way down. I'm going to deselect the first one, deselect the last one, and with control B for edge bevel, I'm going to open up this, I'm just, I'm, I'm beveling that edge open, so I'm kind of opening up a little gutter there. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is in polygon mode, I'm going to select two polygons and then I'm going to select loop again. Except this time I'm going to grab onto that triangle and I'm going to grab onto that triangle. And I'm going to, I want to inset this but I don't want any shift. And there's a few few tools that I can do that with. But I'm going to use multiply, multi-shift, in for numeric. And I can do it interactive but I like using the, the mini slider when I'm just doing an inset so I don't accidentally shift any. So I'm just insetting this. Okay, and that'll work. And so now if I zoom in, you can see I've inserted a little bit, which is going to help retain the shape whenever I um, do the next move. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to deselect this triangle and I'm going to uh, deselect 
this triangle and with that loop selected I'm going to hit L for connect which is the same as going over to construct connect but we're going to use connect a lot so we might as well um, use a shortcut key which is L. If I move over to points it selects the newly created points on those edges and in the top view I'm just going to hit H for stretch and I'm going to stretch out those points. Okay, And that works. Okay, so you can already kind of see the threads, but if I hit tab, you can see I've got the threads in there. But I've got an issue. I've got these open-ended areas, but I can fix that. So I'm going to go back to polygonal mode. You can do all of this in subpatch mode, but I find it a little easier to do it in, in polygonal mode uh, at certain stages. So I'm going to cap this off. One, two, three, four. Remember, I want to work with all... Uh, quads, all four point polys. This was a triangle right here, this polygon right here, but when we when we used connect and split down that row it added the extra point we needed for this to become a, a what I like to refer to as a four point try. Okay, so I've capped that off. Let's go ahead and cap this off. One, two, three, four. P for polygon. You want to select an order uh, it, it ensures a, a, a polygon uh, that you're expecting to be made. So I'm going to select this one edge and select loop. And let's come over here. I've got my object turned upside down, which is kind of interesting. So I'm going to select with that loop selected E for extender plus, and I'm just going to stretch it flat. Okay, something like that. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and cap this off. So while I'm over here, I'm just going to lasso select these points, not that point right there, so the bordering points, and P for polygon. Okay. Now, I don't want it to be an ingon. I want it to be uh, all quads, so I'm just going to select this point and this point and hit L for connect. Then, with, with edge mode, I'm going to select this edge and hit L, which, which splits, which adds a point right in the center, which allows me to then hit L and now I have all quads up there so when I hit tab in subpatch mode it's going it's going to work it's a little rounded up here so I'm going to select these polygons come over here hit E and just offset them a little bit let's just move it down just a little bit and now when I hit tab it's a much tighter edge. I could use uh, subpatch weights, but I try and avoid them just so that my objects can move from uh, one package to the other and still have the same look. Okay, so we're, we're set on that end, but we really need to do this end. So again, I don't have to work in polygonal mode, but I'm going to. I like to, to do it for, for this setup. So I'm going to select this edge, and I'm going to select loop hit E for extender plus and I'm just gonna stretch that up okay and then I, those points are selected but I always just as a backup I like to just select them myself P for polygon select these two points hit L select this edge and if one edge is selected in edge mode if I hit L it makes a point right on the center right at the the halfway point of that edge I can hit L Again, we were going to want that tight edge, so I'll hit E, T for move, move it up, and the closer it is, the tighter that edge is going to be. Okay, Hit tab, and now I've got a an all quad. Let's just double check. I, I always like to double check. W for statistics, and when I say all quads, I'm saying all four-point polys. Okay, so each polygon has four vertices, and there's 472. Okay, so there we go. We've got our our nice little thread uh, all with quads all wrapping around and uh, if we want if this was for the end of the dagger well I could um, just start building out of this end the, the like the handle and go from there if this was going to be say for a bottle or something I could just grab these let's just do it real fast and then we'll, we'll, we'll wrap on this so E I'm gonna shrink it in some E pull it down some, E, pull it down, and I'm starting to create the, um, the opening to the bottle. Uh, so there you go. It's a, um, a quick way of doing threads uh, that are all connected uh, with subpatches.